Over the last few weeks, there have been numerous allegations made towards me and my family without any proof or evidence, because there isn't any. This video explains in very simple terms all you need to know about certain events that have been mentioned and who the real finger of blame points to on Tyneside. Please make sure you share this video with friends and anyone you feel may need educating with the facts, not the fiction. Stephen Sayers, June 2021. In video one, we explain the untrue allegations that Stephen Sayers was a police informant. We showed evidence obtained directly from a solicitor's file, containing statements and information relating to a trial where a registered informant was used against Stephen, as well as a letter from David Cleland MP regarding Conroy and David Glover. also showed how DC Henderson did not even exist. In video two, we prove conclusively that Paddy Conroy has never been suspected, arrested, questioned, charged, or convicted of any crime contained within Operation Insight. We showed every single page from the original Operation Insight report, as well as intelligent reports obtained through disclosure. We presented all evidence with complete transparency and have made all of it available to download for examination by including a link in the description box of each video. The only alterations made to any of this evidence was to remove any personal address details and the name of the businessman involved in one of the cases, which is required by law. Now, in this final video, we present the most conclusive evidence yet, in its entirety. Hello, my, my name is Terry Mullins. Um, I run my business, it's UK Polygraph Services, and I've been in practice since March 2005. Um, I'm probably the uh, longest running polygraph examiner in the UK at the moment, um, purely because the ones two prior to me have now retired. Polygraph is a, a very good means of uh, for truth verification for lots of people. There's so many people that are falsely accused for thefts, frauds, murders, um, and child abuse all, all through this country. And polygraph is one of the only means to actually make a decision about whether that person is truthful or not. Because unfortunately today, uh, our word is not always good enough. Um, there are also people falsely convicted and falsely arrested for crimes that they did not commit. So polygraph has been very much in my life for 16 years, 16 plus years, um, and it's been very successful in the many thousands of tests that I've done in nearly 70 countries I've worked, um, but I mainly do most of my business here in the UK. I have an additional business going with using a new, the new polygraph, if you wish, uh, called iDetect, and that is now becoming um, as popular as polygraph itself. Have you got any heart or cardiac problems? No, I was born with a heart murmur. Yeah, have you, have you got any problems with it now? No. Do you suffer from asthma? Yes. What do you pumps do you take? Um, uh, this weather, or ten a year. What, one pump or...? The... Yeah, well, I sometimes two pumps with the weather, you know. Okay, so which one have you taken today? I've took Ventolin. Yeah, it's just the Ventolin. Yeah, it's right Ventolin, yeah. Okay. Are you going to need that during the test, during that? So I, don't, I don't know, there's a possibility I brought it with us just in case I do. Yeah, yeah, use it before the test, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to affect your test whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Are you diabetic? No. Epilepsy? No. Taking anything for depression? No. Any psychiatric history? No. You've been sectioned, it's all in your life, nothing. You're not pregnant? Have you had a blood transfusion in the last three no. months? Are you taking any medication apart from your um, asthma? No. Nothing whatsoever? Um, I took some paracetamol in the last week when I had no, two pulled No, prescription? No, 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 no. Nothing yet. at all?
And you smoke? How many do you smoke a day? 20. In the last 48 hours, have you taken any illegal or banned substances? Uh, yes, after noon, I smoked some cannabis. Yeah, okay. Not today? No, not today. Okay. Any alcohol today? No. Have you had a polygraph test before today? No. Okay, so I want you to sign several places. One. Do you mind if I just read it first? Uh -huh. Yeah, you're going to read it anyway mm -hmm. when you get round to it. My signature there for this medical information. Yeah, I'll do that. Oh. Then put your first and your second name in the top. Have a read through. One of there, tell you that lane there underneath there. Yeah, where the where the cross is on. Yeah. Sorry. Just there. Oh, sorry. Hey, are you giving permission for anyone else to have these results? No. Just us. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. These guys. Yeah. I have to ask you. Yes. Yes. Questions. Yeah. During the test, you might also hear me typing or you can hear me writing. Don't get distracted by it. I'm making notes and little things happen. Don't turn around, just keep focused yeah. on the yes, You don't focus. turn around at all and yeah. you don't speak to me at all. Just yes or no. Just yes or no. When I let the cuff down, do you want all this on tape? Do you want all this on film? I'm recording it, so oh, right. if you just come <clears> on <throat> and I'll, I'll I, I normally just try to give, give them that little head up straight away anyways. That um, once I let your cuff down during after the first chart, and then we're going to go to the second chart, I will ask you two questions only. I don't want to have a discussion with you in any way. The two questions I'll ask you is, do you want to continue with the test? Okay? And do you feel okay? So if you then feel sick, you feel faint, anything like that, you just have to say, stop the test. Okay. And if you stop the test, we will not restart. You get one go at this in 24 hours. Okay. And that's the under the rules as well of polygraph. Okay. okay. So uh, there's no two times like the FBI where they test people four times a day. That's not correct. <laughs> but then the I've come down to tell the truth, you know. Huh? I've come down to tell the truth. Yep. And I appreciate that. But you wouldn't believe how many people do not. So, are you ready? Yes, I am. No, stay where you are. I'm sorry. We're going to have a chat. Tell me why, why you need to come and have this test today, Stephen. Because I want the truth to be told. I want, I want my name cleared, and I want the truth to be told. What for? The I've, been, I've, been, the I've been falsely accused of being a police informer. Okay. Can you expand on that for Yes, me? yes, by a man who was trying to use deflectionary tactics to take attention away from himself. And yeah, he, just keep talking. And he thinks by calling me, and blackening my name, it will deflect attention away from what he's trying to do, which is uh, blocking my name, deflect attention away from himself, and get us arrested. 
Have you ever worked with uh, this person? No. Well, who's, who is this person? Paddy Conway. Okay. And is he from the area that you come he eventually, from? He eventually comes from the same area. Okay. Have you had a you had a working relationship with this person at all? No. Never? No. So why would you think that he's doing doing what he's doing now? Saying that you're a police informant? Because of jealousy. Because of jealousy, you know. Um, as the two were two come from two criminal families in the west end of Newcastle. And the criminal fraternity has stepped over him and become what he only he could only dream of. And jealousy has ripped him apart. It's the truth. He believes then what? He believes that he should have all attention, all the respect, and what comes with it, you know. Um, the man's motive, the man's motive is, as I say, it stems with jealousy, but his motive is to repeatedly, he's done 70 podcasts over the last two months, and he's repeatedly, on every one, each day, he's got an obsession with us, and he just, he just constantly talks about us in a derogatory way. So it's a bit extreme, isn't it? To, to <laughs> yes, to, yes. Yeah, but it's a bit extreme for you to want to go to these lengths to prove something that happened when? How many years ago? No, it's, um, it's not extreme because of the fact of the lies are so severe. It can put, he's, he's accusing me of really serious crimes. What he's doing, he's putting us in the frame for them by, by basically accusing us, you know? Be accusing us of an innocent man. But you've admitted that you were in a criminal fraternity. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. And obviously, you are saying you were very successful. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is just pure jealousy. Pure jealousy, and yes. How do you how do you know that? Just by from that conversation, just in saying. <coughs> um, nobody's behaviour over the last thirty year. Every time he mentions my name, he mentions my name. He gets, he goes into one. You know, he just starts calling with instant. He gets up in the morning. He goes on his podcast. He doesn't get a wash. He doesn't get a cup of tea. He goes and then the first thing he does, starts slagging us off. Um, well, I dare say a few of your neighbours might do that as well. So Maybe so, but this is this. The man is accusing us of multiple murders, which is totally incorrect. You know, I woke up in the morning, I had coffee. The man accused, I'd been accused of nine murders. Please, you know, I'm going to have my breakfast. So this is a sort of severe act. It's here. just going over the top, you know, so far over the top where he's just really as if it's. As if it's nothing, as if he's throwing confetti around, he's just calling people, police, anybody associates with me, anybody who has anything to do with me, friends, family, he calls them all police informers. But we're not going to be able to cover um, nine murders or alleged murders within this test because obviously that's a, a big serious issue. So there has to be a focus on what we need to do on this test today. Um, what, what is that? Is that just purely then going to be about being a police informer? Yes, yes, yeah? yes. And he kept calling his deflectionary tactics. I exposed him, I exposed him, and uh, he, he made a statement, he made a statement about his exposed his connection with child, child porn on Facebook. And he made, and, uh, he made, a, sta he made a statement against us, a five page statement. And he thinks by carrying on and blocking my name and blocking my name, it's okay for him. To create a, create this false accusations that basically I'm an informer, so he can justify corners. He said he's done this to me, and he says I've had him arrested on multiple occasions. Well, I haven't. Well, I haven't. And he keeps saying I served prison sentences for us. He's done. He's got nine previous convictions. He says I've been a registered police informer. He's five years old, and his first conviction was when he was 16. So I was at junior school when I was working for Ensis. I don't think so, you know. It's, it's, it's just too, it's, it's done by a man whose head isn't functioning properly, but people are taking notice. And if you've got three, if you're getting two, three thousand views a day, and you've got 70 over the last two months, there's a lot of people taking notice of this now, and it's time I need to stop it in its tracks, you know. You know, if it's not told, and, not, and if the like is told repeatedly, people tend to believe it could be the truth, and I want to stop this, I want people to know it's not the truth. So how many people do you feel that are watching this? Podcast. How many? How many will watch this podcast? Yeah. No. No. How what, many? Paddy's podcast. Three thousand a day. Three thousand a day. On each one, sometimes you do three a day. And who are those people? I mean, are they followers? Followers. 
Uh, you know, strangers, strangers from strangers from out the road who report he plays a victim card yeah. as if he's a victim, victim, victim. I've done this. I'm a grass. I'm this and I'm that. When well, I'm nothing at any of these, and, and he's, he's in at the end of the day, he's saying he's going to have a who's done it and have a, He's going to be. He's going to have a trial on YouTube. He's going to be my co-defendant, judge, jury, and prosecutor all in one. And I will not be attending this thing. So. And he's blocking me name and he's putting them these people who have been killed have got families. These people may want retribution. You know, they're putting me and my family at in risk and I'm an innocent man. And that's the piece I really wanted to get from yeah. you is well, why does it bother you if it's not true? But of course then you're putting it into perspective of mm-hmm. that there are families of these murdered yes, men yes, yes. that may want retribution. Yes, yes, okay. yes, of course. So the only way that that could have happened, I take it from what you've already told me, is that if if you to uh, is to be a police informant, giving information to the enforcement agencies to be able to uh, discover what's going on, mm-hmm. um, and you're stating that you've never done that, never in my life, never ever given any information to a police officer or NCA. No, or no, no. no. I, I, well, I got a, I got a re- I got beaten up of, of, of two police officers once, and I made a statement against them in an official complaint. So yes, I have made a statement against somebody before, but only against the police officer in an official complaint. When I was handcuffed, and I got beaten up in the back of a van of two of them. So I made an official complaint against them. Told them that's the only statements I've made, like statement I've made, you know. Yeah. Which, if you can watch some programs and, and read some newspapers, and that's be common practice in certain places and certain areas yeah, with, yeah. with people. Um, not saying it's right or wrong. Um, it is wrong in the eyes of the public seeing something. But when it's coming down to your stating that you have never given information to any law enforcement agency. To have anybody arrested, never. never. I've uh, never given information as an informer ever in my life. Yeah. Right? I've given information. We car got stolen once. You know, I've reported the car stolen. Yeah. So that's him asking about I give information. Yes, on a car being stolen, on getting beaten up of two police officers when I made a fiscal complaint. But have I made a, have I given the information of anybody arrested relating to a crime? No. Okay. I mean, that's a normal thing to do, is you know, you go to the police when you have your car stolen. Yeah. Today you get a, a reference number, you don't actually investigate that crime um, in most cases now. But these are all serious allegations. Yeah. And you just want to prove that you've never been a police informant never, never, from what you've told me previously and from what I've read about you. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and that's the way you should yeah. go with this. Yes, yes. Someone like, like me, I'll give my sentences for me, guidelines for me crime, is like three to four years. I receive a 10 year sentence. Um, I, was up for the, I was up for preventing the course of justice, section four. I tried to help me because he got run over and she was handicapped. And the insurance company says, we're only partially to blame. So I tried to help them and told the, told the right thing for them, you know. So I've got previous convictions for certain things. Uh, my head seems to be all over the moment because I want to focus on one thing. But there's that many ideas coming in my head where I wish to run past it. And I seem to be like, uh, not focusing properly. Yeah. It's OK. I mean, we can only focus on, on one area of one type of question yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know that you have got a lot of information which you previously provided for me. And we filtered that through to make sure that we could concentrate on a single issue which is about police informants. Yes. Um, and that's whether you have ever been one, whether you have been one for a particular police officer uh, that has been named, mm-hmm. um, and whether you've done any work for any other law enforcement agency. Doesn't matter, there are so many, and that would include all other forces. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you want to prove yes, to yes, yes, your yes. test. Yes, yes. So, as an open question to you, why should I believe what you're telling me is true? Just because I'm an innocent man, I've come down here to show you, and you'll be, I know I can come down here, and if I was telling lies, you can see I'm telling lies. On and the I, test, yeah. Yes, yes, but I you're, know. You're giving me a one-sided story. Yeah. I mean, I haven't spoken to to uh, Paddy Conroy at mm-hmm. all, um, and it's not really uh, for me to do that, because I believe that I would get pretty much the same story as you've just told me yeah. um, about it, and I don't really particularly want to watch his podcast. But, why, why do you think that I should believe what you're telling me, just as two people talking? We'll let the test do, do the, uh, the answers for this. But... Why do I believe him? 
Well, I suppose it'd be no different than anybody else coming here, you know. We've got, we, you know, they've come to speak the truth, and I've, that's what I've come to do. So I can only speak the truth, and you will have to read it which way it is. You'll be able to see when you take this test that, that I am telling the truth. But why should you believe it? I, do, I don't honestly know, because people are going to come here, some, some give different reasons. But I've got a lot of risk here, you know. My, my, you know, I'm not, I'm not a criminal anymore. I'm going to go into prisons and I'm going to talk to youngins and encourage youngins. This is not the life to live. Now, I kind of go in there as a police informer. They can't, they've got no respect for this man. So I'm trying to do some good in my life. I know that ever in my ways and I've seen that ever in my ways. And I, you know, I've got my son, my son, my oldest son looked up as I made sure he didn't follow my path. He went to Volume Ravines. You know, my other son's a little businessman. They're, they're not criminals. They're not criminals, they're low-biting people. I know that, I know I've done wrong in life, but you can't, you know, I'm trying to bring people back into society and by going at the youth custody centres and getting these young ones when they're young and say, listen, this is not the life you lead, son. I've lived this life, yeah. I've got books, I'm getting to film, I'm getting to sign it. It's worth nothing, it's worth nothing. And that's the sort of, that's my motive. It's one of the motives behind it, Uncle, yeah, to get myself out in any jeopardy what I could be in, any, you know, for people who have retribution over these crimes what I, I haven't committed. Okay. I mean, you, uh, I, I take it respectfully how you uh, you say that. I mean, I'm not here to make a judgment on your personal judgment yes. because that was not, that's not the purpose of this. The polygraph test will do that yes. um, because the polygraph will pick up reactions from your body. Um, it takes physiology into, into account where it's going to measure your blood pressure and your pulse rate. <laughs> And if you tell lies, then it takes a lot more effort to lie than to tell the truth. And those areas of your body, um, for in your blood pressure and pulse rate, yeah. will be affected. Yeah. Um, sometimes very minutely, but most times they are when it's a lot, when it's something as serious as this in the crimes that you're talking about. Mm. So being a police informant with with serious crimes can have a serious effect. On of course, it can. Um, and also measuring your respiration you know, on your body for breathing, from one from your chest, from your thoracic, and the second one from your diaphragm that's inside your abdomen. Um, and then I should be putting on finger plates onto your fingers, and they're going to be measuring electrodermal activity from your sweat gland. Mm -hmm. Now, this isn't about sweat. This isn't about electrical signals that's coming from your sweat gland. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so even if you do have wet hands or you're perspiring, and even now it is very warm in this room, so we're both actually quite warm, that isn't going to affect your test. Okay. But you need to follow all my instructions on this test, okay, and I will be monitoring movement, etc. Innocent people will follow every instruction I give them. They will go it to the letter, follow my instructions, and answer the questions truthfully. Now, on this particular test I'm using is called a directed lie test. So I'm going to get you to tell me three very small lies. Um, they can be large lies in the, in the eyes of a parent and things like that, but they're very small lies. They are not associated with your test whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But they will show me that you have a reaction to small, minor lies. And if they give a result from minor, small, minor lies, you can imagine that if you lie to a large uh, issue, which is ever being a police informant, yeah. um, the reactions are going to be quite large. Yeah. Um, then there are going to be some uh, other questions which we call known truths. And they're just about you being in this room, whether you're sitting down, there's lights on in the room, you're in a meeting room, that type of thing. They're all things that I know the answer to. Okay, so there's no way that you could possibly lie to those and I wouldn't know about it. Yeah, yeah. But the test doesn't take very long. Um, if you sit down and do everything I ask you to, the test will be over within 18 to 20 minutes. But you need to be absolutely certain that you're going to tell me the truth about yes. your main relevant questions. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. So do you want to review those now? No, no, I'm quite happy with your things. Well, I'm going to do it right well, now with you anyway. I will do that in any case. But did you want to have a drink or something before well, that's that? Well, that's all right. I'm ready. You OK? <laughs> yeah. So the questions that I've got for you, I'm going to talk to you about the relevant questions um, at the moment. So these are the main topic of what we're doing today. OK? 
So the first question I'm going to ask you is, have you ever been a police informant? Oh. Uh, what do you what do you think being a police informant would involve? Giving information to a police officer to have people arrested or to solve crimes. And it's not always about them being arrested. It's sometimes because yes. the police work in different ways. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they get information and they may monitor people for long periods, especially in things like drugs and things, they will want to monitor people. They won't automatically take your word and go, let's have a, you know, let's go and arrest these people. Mm -hmm. But you, a, a police informer would be somebody who's given information that could be accessed by the police and also be useful to them. Um, mm -hmm. And that way, do you understand that? I fully understand the meaning of a police informer. Good. The second one, um, it's actually going to name um, a police officer. We don't know his rank for certain, okay? And I don't want to use his rank because at the time, his rank may be different to what it is now or even whether that person is still in the police. Mm -hmm. But we do know that um, the name that has been given to you by Paddy Conroy is a police officer named as Gil Smith. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's correct. So the question will be, has Gil Smith ever been your police handler? No. Uh, what do you interpret as being a police handler? A police handler is somebody who an informer goes to and he's, he's a person who, con who controls the informer and he comes back and tells them all, he t the informer tells the handler all his information. Do you think they would do that for free? I don't know, they might do it to help them get out of the case, they might, have to do, they might want to do it for money, there could be a million reasons. Yeah, but I mean, it wouldn't make any difference one way or the other. Mm -hmm. A police informer is a That's police informer. Yes, for whatever reason. Um, some people do get paid, um, as well, probably we can all see, even if it's on documentaries and, and, and different TV shows. Mm -hmm. But let's take it that some people would get paid, and others may actually, like there have been some cases recently in or the last sort of four or five years, especially around the London area, where police informants um, have been able to get away with crimes, mm. um, providing they provided the police with other yes. information. So it's not always about getting payment, it That's might correct. be evading capture or mm. having their sentences reduced, etc. Yeah. You fully understand fully that's what, or, fully that understand. Is what a police informer I fully understand the meaning of a police informer. That. Okay, good. Um, the next one is, have you ever worked for any law enforcement agencies? No. What sort of agencies do you think I'm referring to? I would imagine uh, Customs, NSYS, MI5, Special Branch, how many police forces is there, you know? Yeah, well, there's lots, I mean. Well, whatever they are, I've never worked for any. We're not going to, you know, you're not going to name all, but there's even like Border Force, UK Border Force, yes, yeah. different police sections, um, there's all sorts of agencies that people could be working for, whether it's undercover work or, or whatever. But you're stating that you have never, ever worked for any law enforcement agency. Never, ever period. in my life. Okay. So you fully understand what we're talking about? Yeah. And you're quite happy to answer those questions? 100%. Okay. So I'm going to go back to some of the other questions now. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to use this as a directed lie test. So the only questions I want you to lie to are very small questions. Um, they're not going to be anywhere near being a police informant or criminal activity yeah. in that way. Um, but these are all since you have been an adult, okay? Yeah. So as I discussed with you slightly earlier, we, we went through this, these questions and you, I told you to tell me the truth, which you did, and you said you'd done all of these three things over mm -hmm. your lifetime, yeah. okay? Now I want you to actually lie to those questions, and this is a perfectly acceptable test to be doing. Okay. So the first one that I would ask you is, in your entire life as an adult, have you told a single lie to your parents? Never, no. Okay. And we both know that that is a lie. Yes, yes, yes. As you are, I want you to answer. Yes, yes. Because it takes more effort to lie to something than to actually tell the truth. Mm -hmm. In your entire life as an adult, have you stolen anything from a shop? No. And that could be any type of shop. It can be a Mars bar. 
or it can be an entire contents of a, a business or a shop or a business of any type. You're mm -hmm. actually, you're asking that question. Mm -hmm. um, and the last one in that uh, type of question is, in your entire life as an adult, have you lied to someone in authority? No. Now, lying to someone in authority can be even a traffic warden um, where you're parked, um, if you threw litter down and they ask you that your litter, speeding, it can be pretty much anything, lying on um, your council tax or whatever it is that around, it's lying to your authority. You understand fully the wide scope of that question? Yeah. And would you answer to that? No. No. There's going to be three other questions and they're just what we uh, call known truths. So they're sort of ground truth, if you like. So I want the truth to these questions. Yeah. And that is, are you sitting down in this room? Yes. And I know you are, so any other answer you give me will be irrelevant. Are you in a meeting room? Yes. We are in a meeting room in a building of my offices, so we're using the boardroom. So this is a meeting room. Yeah. Um, and are the lights on in this room? Yes. Yeah. You need to look up because there's a lot of bright lights in this room. So I, I, don't, don't, I don't know the things not these two, you know. Yeah, I don't really want you to look up during no, that time no. and think about it. The lights are not going to be switched off in this time. And it is pretty bright in this room. You're okay with that? Yeah. Now, the first two questions I'm going to ask you, okay, are going to be, do you understand I will only ask you questions that we have talked about? Yes. Okay, so it's a very generalized question, but you're going to answer yes, obviously. And will you tell the truth to each question that I ask you? I'm going to change that to, are you going to tell the truth to each relevant question? Okay, mm -hmm. because we are doing the directed lie. So that is, will you tell the truth to each relevant question that I ask you? The relevant questions are all about police informant. Yes. Okay. The others are just their questions, mm -hmm. but the relevant ones, they're the ones that are going to decide whether you're truthful or not to. Yeah. Do you understand everything I've Yes, I don't fully understand. Do you have got any questions at this point? No. None whatsoever? No. You're quite happy to do this test on yes. this basis? Yes. Yeah. Do you understand what I mentioned to you about this equipment? Yes, I do. Okay. It's blood pressure cuff, pneumographs finger plates and also a movement sensor on the chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you are fully okay about all of those things. Yes. But any questions about doing this polygraph test? No more so. No more so. And you're quite happy to continue as you are? Yes, one of us. Okay. So Stephen, um, I've given you all the instructions about the polygraph test and how it all works and you understood everything? Fully. Okay. So now I'm going to put some of the components on you. Um, then as soon as we've got that done, I'm going to review the questions with you one time and then we're going to start your test. Okay. Okay. So all I want you to do at the moment is just, rest, just lift your arms slightly, sit, lean forward a touch, that's it. And I'm just going to put this pneumograph across your stomach. It's not going to be tight. Totally. Is that okay with you? Chuck it. Good. This is the second pneumograph. Mm -hmm. Do the same again, and I'll put this one on your upper chest. How's that? Tommy. Great. This is like a standard blood pressure cuff. You've had them on before. What I'm going to do with this, I'm going to inflate it <coughs> to 160 millimeters of mercury. It's just a pressure scale, just like a doctor. They might take it up to 200. Um, but it's just going to sit on your arm. I'm going to inflate it to say 160, and then immediately I'm going to drop that down to around 60, 65 millimeters of mercury, and then it's going to stay on your arm. Okay? It's going to have a, a, a slight grip on your arm. It's going to be a little bit of discomfort, but it is not going to damage you. It's not going to hurt you overall. If it, if you are really painful and you need to stop it, then the, the test will be over at that point. Okay. okay. So you just need to suffer that for five minutes at a time. After each chart, I will let the pressure out for that about a minute. You can then pump your fist, get some blood back, running back through your arm. Okay. Okay. 
Perfect. I'm just going to come around and I'm going to put some finger plates onto your hand. So you've already previously wiped your hands. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do that again? <laughs> no, no, no. You're okay. All right. So if you can just put your hand out like this. Just going to put one on your index finger. And I'm going to put one on your ring finger. Okay? Chumman. Now you will start to feel, even now, you might see a, feel a slight throb, and all it is is your pulse. If you put a plaster on your finger, it gives you the same effect. I'd like you to put your feet flat on the floor, okay? And that's how I'd like you to sit. So get yourself as comfortable as you possibly can, okay? I'm just checking everything that else is on you. Do you feel okay? Jump I'm comfortable in. enough. Jump in. Good. I shall want you to sit perfectly still. There's a lot of out there. Okay, edge. you can do that. Yeah. Once the test has started, that cuff's inflated, I should just want you to look straight ahead, okay? Not look sideways. I don't want you to move your fingers, toes, twitching your bottom. I definitely don't want you flexing your left arm because that will exacerbate the movement because of the cuff. It's just trying to keep yourself nice and still. If you make a movement, I will say to you, Stephen, stop moving. Okay. Okay. I can't always tell exactly where that movement's coming from, but I definitely know that you're moving because of the movement sensor. So I just want you to sit perfectly still at all times. I will give you several warnings if you keep moving. I will mark your chart at the same time. If you ignore my warnings, I will just let you continue. And at the end of the test, as previously discussed, I will give you a result of no opinion. Yeah. Okay. Charming. So this is for you. This is your test, and everything we're going to do today is for you. Fully explained, Mr. Tell you. Fantastic. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Right. We're not going to inflate that yet. I'm going to run through the questions with you one more time. Yeah. To make sure that you understand them all. Just remember, it's a directed lie test. So all questions that begin with in your entire life as an adult, you are going to lie to. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Okay, these are your questions that you've agreed to do on this test. Do you understand that I will only ask you questions we have talked about? Yes. Will you tell the truth to each relevant question that I ask you? Yes. Are you sitting down in this room? Yes. In your entire life as an adult, have you told a single lie to your parents? No. Have you ever been a police informant? No. Are you in a meeting room? Yes. In your entire life as an adult, have you stolen anything from a shop? No. Has Gil Smith ever been your police handler? No. Are the lights on in this room? Yes. In your entire life as an adult, have you lied to someone in authority? No. Have you ever worked for any law enforcement agencies? No. Perfect. Are you ready to start? I'm ready. Okay. Anything you want to ask me before we start the test? Nothing. You've signed a consent form saying that you believe in the Validity of a polygraph test. Does that still stand the same? Yes. You don't wish to change any part of your statement? No. Okay, I'm going to inflate your cuff now.
Are you ready? Yes. Okay, Stephen, your test has started. Do you understand that I will only ask you questions we have talked about? Yes. Will you tell the truth to each relevant question that I ask you? Yes. Just try and keep very still for me. Are you sitting down in this room? Yes. In your entire life as an adult, have you told a single lie to your parents? No. Have you ever been a police informant? No. Are you in a meeting room? Yes. In your entire life as an adult, have you stolen anything from a shop? No. Has Gil Smith ever been your police handler? No. Right, still for me? Sorry. Are the lights on in this room? Yes. In your entire life as an adult, have you lied to someone in authority? 
No. Have you ever worked for any law enforcement agencies? No. Okay, that's the end of your first chart. You can just relax, letting your cuff down, okay? So you can now fidget, move, move your hands, arms, mm -hmm. pump your fist. No one mentioned the entire life, I was that last question there. I'm not going to get sorry, the conversation sorry, sorry, with you. Sorry, my okay, so we're just going to continue with your test. Do you feel okay? Yeah. And George, do you want to stop the test? No. And. Uh, you sure you want to continue? Yes, I do, yes. Okay. So there's no conversation between us. Okay, my apologies. All right, no problem. Just try and keep as still as you can. You only made one big movement and a couple of small ones, but that's fine. So I'm going to give you another 30 seconds to get yourself composed. Yeah. And we'll start again. Ready? Yes. Okay. So it's going to be exactly the same questions, but the order of some of the questions would have changed. Yeah. Okay. Your test has started. Do you understand that I will only ask you questions we have talked about? Yes. Will you tell the truth to each relevant question that I ask you? Yes. Are you sitting down in this room? Yes. In your entire life as an adult, have you told a single lie to your parents? No.
Has Gil Smith ever been your police handler? No. Are you in a meeting room? Yes. In your entire life as an adult, have you stolen anything from a shop? No. Have you ever worked for any law enforcement agencies? No. Are the lights on in this room? Yes. In your entire life as an adult, have you lied to someone in authority? No. Have you ever been a police informant? No. Okay, just relax. You can fidget if you want to. Um, what's that? I was itchy. Do you feel okay? Yeah, yeah, jump in. Jump in. Do you want to continue? Yes, I do. Just give you a minute. You can move your legs, arms and all that if you want to in a minute. Yeah, give yourself chill. I'm good. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. It's your third chart. Same questions, slightly different order on the questions. Okay, Stephen, your test has started. 
Let's keep nice and still. Do you understand? I will only ask you questions we have talked about. Yes. Will you tell the truth to each relevant question that I ask you? Yes. Are you sitting down in this room? Yes. In your entire life as an adult, have you told a single lie to your parents? No. I'm going to repeat that question, okay? You made quite a lot of few movements at that moment. So I'm going to repeat that one time, okay? Yes. In your entire life as an adult, have you told a single lie to your parents? No. Have you ever worked for any law enforcement agencies? No. Are you in a meeting room? Yes. Start breathing. So try not to do the deep breaths if you can. Okay. In your entire life as an adult, have you stolen anything from a shop? No.
Have you ever been a police informant? No. Are the lights on in this room? Yes. In your entire life as an adult, have you lied to someone in authority? No. Has Gil Smith ever been your police handler? No. Okay. It's the end of your test. Okay. Jump in. Just going to take everything off you now. Jump in. Okay, Stephen. Um, you can look at me if you wish. No, no, really, come on. Yeah. But um, we've completed your test. Um, we've done three uh, question sets with you. Um, you only had a couple of small movements within it and you complied with all of my instructions, which I'm very pleased about. Uh, the issue was around about whether you've been a police informant or an agency informant and for one particular person. And I asked you to be absolutely truthful with me throughout this test. Have you done that? Yes. Good. Well, I'm very pleased to tell you that you have come through your test and the result is no deception indicated which means that you were truthful to all three questions because you have to be truthful to all three not just one um, so you, as far as I'm concerned you have not lied to me and you have been truthful about everything you've said up to this point how do you feel about that? It's what I already knew, you know, it's just for the people on the camera to figure out really, you know, I'm, I'm delighted to hear because I felt a bit nervous when the questions were coming out. But it's something like so me and my associates and people around this family already know the answer to this is, and as I say, it's for the general public on YouTube to see the truth here. Yeah, I understand that. But, you know, sometimes, but some people do tell lies on, on polygraph tests and, uh, but, um, and I didn't have an expectation one way or the other. I don't, I'm independent. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very pleased to tell you that it was despite, you know, just one question and a couple of small movements, all the tracings on my charts have shown that you are truthful to each of those relevant questions. Thank you very much. What you got to say about that? And Bonnie Lard. <laughs> Thank you very much. No problem. But for the test that I've done today uh, for Stephen, um, has proven that Stephen was telling the truth all along about his uh, what, what he's been accused of, which is basically being a police informant and having a, a, a giving false information to other criminal gangs or for other people that have actually been murdered. Stephen told the entire truth, and I'll stand by his test 100%. Well, today I've cleared my name, ladies and gentlemen. You know, after 30 years of lies, excuses, slander. 
of a certain individual. Now, I am completely innocent of these allegations. And what it makes is the person who's pointing the finger is completely guilty. Between, one, between the two, one person was telling lies and one person was in the former. And I've just proved to you that is not me. So you've got to look at what it does. If you take Conroy's lies out of the equation, what you're left with a man whose motive is one. First of all, deflect attention away from yourself. Two, call black and other people's names. Three, to get people arrested for certain crimes, regurgitating certain crimes and want to have a kangaroo court and want me to be his co-accused, stand there as a defendant while he's judge, jury, prosecuting. Uh, this is not right, this is not right. Well, today, as I say, I've cleared my name. Look at the person who's been pointing the bad finger here. Uh, adios, amigos.